Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today to investigate the reports I've heard that rich dyes are not very washed fast on cottons. Some of some of you have told, reached out and told me that you've dyed you know, a shirt with the RIT liquid dyes in the past and then over time the dye washed out. So I wanted to dye some shirts and some mini skeins of yarns and see how well the, the color will stay. I also want to investigate this product that is the RIT Color Stay Dye Fixative. A lot of us were talking in the Chemnitz Lab group about What's the point of a dye fixative? A dye should stay in the yarn. I have no idea what is in this product, but this does seem to be indicated for cellulose fibers. This dye fixative says that it will reduce color bleeding on fabrics including cotton, linen, rayon, remy, and hemp fabrics. These are all cellulose fibers, which are where some of you have reported that you've had trouble with the color staying. So, if we dye two t-shirts and two mini skeins of yarn and treat one shirt and one mini skein with a dye fixative and leave some without and then we wash it a lot of times, will we see more color retention in the, in the fiber that we've used this color stay fixative? I am as curious as you to see what the results will be. So let's dye some projects and then start washing them. Today I'm going to dye two 100% cotton t-shirts and two mini skeins of the Knit Picks Simply Cotton Worsted Weight Yarn, which is 100% organic cotton. I am going to just roll up the shirts like so and then secure the length with some rubber bands. And I'm going to do the same to the second shirt. I thought that this would give some visual interest <laughs> as well. And I'm lightly adding, I think, three rubber bands per shirt. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and do five. Because this might leave some cool white patches. We'll also see how deep the dye will penetrate, so that'll be kind of fun. I'm going to go ahead and finish adding four more rubber bands onto this shirt, and then I'm going to pre-soak all of the fiber in some plain tap water for a minimum of 30 minutes. In this dye bath that is just below a simmer, I had one gallon or 16 cups of water, a third of a cup of salt, which is the proportion of salt to volume that the RIT dye recommends, and then a third of a cup, which is about 80 milliliters, of the RIT Navy dye. And now I've wrung out some of the water from the pre-soak, but I'm going to add first our yarn. And I'm not wearing gloves right now. All right, first I'm adding the yarn. And now I'm going to add our two t-shirts to the pot where I'm gonna let this simmer for about 20 minutes and I will sort of occasionally give it a little stir. If we get all this color in, it's gonna be some pretty, pretty vibrant, vibrant color, but I'm excited to see what kind of pattern we get on the shirts and if you know we can get this depth of color to remain in the yarn with the fixative. We are about seven minutes in and whoa I have to say this is a lot of color in the pot. Um, this is no joke at all. Um, but as whenever the pot starts to bubble a little too much I reduce the heat so that way we don't have any splatter. It has been 20 minutes and I am now going to remove, well, I guess I'm removing a shirt and some of the fiber at the same time. Ha! Huh, in both cases, that's fun. The bottle instructions say to use half of the bottle of the liquid dye for one pound of fabric. 
and that would be about two adult t-shirts. Well, we used a third of a bottle with two kids t-shirts, and there's still a lot of dye left. Now, these are very, very warm, and you can tell that the yarn has taken up a lot of color, but I'm gonna let this cool completely before we start rinsing it, and I'll put everything, we'll open up the shirts, and I'll put everything through a good rinse cycle, I guess, um, hand rinsing cycle before we add some of this to the dye fixative. Before we start our preliminary rinses, let's open up these shirts. All right, let's unwrap these shirts to see what they look like. Whoa, that is so, so cool. Huh. Okay, so this is the, let's see what size this one is. Huh. This is the 4T shirt. Oh, that is awesome. Let's take a look at the 2T. Oh, this is so cool. Let me take a step back so you can see. Oh, this is unbelievably cool. I love the depth of penetration that we got. Okay, right, I'm now putting some cool water into this basin because I know that there is some dye to rinse out before we do our color fixative. And these shirts are so cool that I am honestly almost bummed that I'm gonna attempt to rinse one of them out. But alas, that is the experiment. <laughs> So pretty. And the yarn. I mean, I know that the color will lighten as it dries, but right now I don't see navy. I see black. So when we go to differentiate with the color fixative, on one of the skeins, I've added this little, sort of little extra tie to it. Um, and then with the t-shirts themselves, one of them is 2T and one of them is 4T. So that way, once we're going through all the washing machine steps, we will be able to tell the difference between the two. But I'm not gonna be using any soap at the stage, but I'm gonna go through some rinses until the water starts to clear. Off camera, I have a basin with hot tap water um, that I'm going to add the 2 t shirt and the unlabeled yarn to. And here in the sink, I am adding two tablespoons of the Rit Color Stay liquid, approximately, to this hot water in the sink. And this is where I am going to add the 4 t shirt. Uh, that's the 2T. I'm going to add the 4 t shirt and the yarn with the, the little doodad on it. The reason why I am adding the other shirt and yarn to their own bath of warm water is that I know that some dye will leak out just from this soak, and so I sort of wanted to have a control for that in here. Now, in theory, I should be doing this on the stove top um, because the Rit Color Stay has two sets of instructions. There's one where you can spray the, the dye fixative directly onto your project and let it sit for 20 minutes and then wash. And then there's one where you can add four tablespoons to three gallons of water and then heat for 20 minutes and then rinse. I'm doing something that's a little bit in between. I've added two tablespoons of the dye fixative to about one gallon of water, of hot water, and it's not under continuous heat, but I know that this water, from when I tried this a little earlier, will retain warmth over the 20 minutes. So I will come and stir this every once in a while, but then after 20 minutes, we will come and rinse out these shirts. 
here is the second water bath and I decided to just give it a little stir. And I can tell you already that without the dye fixative in here, there is a lot more color in this basin than there is in the one with the sink, in the sink with the dye fixative. So I have no idea what the dye fixative is, but it does seem to have some difference, even pretty immediately. 20 minutes are up and there's some color in here, but not quite that much. Let's start rinsing this on. I guess the water is still a little warm from the tap, but from what I've tried before, I am expecting to see not a ton of bleeding now. So wait till you see the shirts that did not have the fixative in it. Um, it's gonna be a bold difference, but yeah, I mean, there's not, not very much coming out of there at all and the shirt itself still has a lot of color and the yarn has a ton of color so I'm actually going to remove and set this aside because I am not going to rinse more in here I'm actually going to get ready to go put that in the washing machine but I want to show you this other basin Okay, here is the, here's the shirt and the yarn that I did not use the fixative on. And look at how much darker that color was. The, the yarn still looks dark, but actually the shirt itself is starting to look a little purple even. Um, the, the color in there is not quite as sharp as it was in the one that we used as color fixative. Um, I will compare them to each other in a minute, or right before I put them in the washing machine. But, you know, unlike the other one that was clear pretty quickly after sitting in the warm water for 20 minutes, I think that here, actually, Okay, sitting in the warm water for 20 minutes to actually help here too. The coloration in the shirt is just a little different. So I cannot say for sure that it is the color fixative that made the difference. But I do know that more dye rinsed out um, in the absence of the color fixative. But let's go and take a look at both shirts and both yarns before we do our first run through the washing machine. Straight away, you can see that there is a color difference between these two shirts. The larger 4 t shirt is the one that we used with the color fixative, and we've got navy and blue in there. In the 2 t shirt, which had no color fixative, the, we see more pink in there. And this pink hue was not present beforehand. This was because, I think, the way that more of the color was sort of leaching out in the warm water. When it comes to the two yarns, at this point, I don't see a huge difference between with and without the color fixative. I am gonna place both skeins of yarn inside this little garment bag, so hopefully things won't get too tangled in the washing machine. And then I am going to go wash all of this on cold in the washing machine on a regular cycle using a normal pod, like one pod of detergent. One wash in and if it wasn't pink before, it is now. So both of the shirts are actually looking extremely similar after one wash in the washing machine. Now, the yarns have kind of made a little bit through this bag but let's see what we can see so i will say this the cotton yarns are soft after going through the washing machine but i am not currently seeing much of a difference between the one that had the color fixative and the one that did not so i am going to put this through two more washes on the washing machine and we will see if we see any difference between the yarns or our t-shirts. 
And once again, each time I am going to use one uh, laundry pod and do the wash cycle on cold and do a heavy duty wash cycle. After three runs through the washing machine, I still don't really see a huge difference between these shirts. Both of them have this pinkish background and then go to a really, really deep navy. Maybe I'll see something once they're dry, the shirts are still wet, but you know, I don't really see like the, that the color fixative has made any real difference on the 4T versus the 2T. The, I have a color catcher sheet I did put in the laundry that is the same pink color as the white background. So I would still recommend washing your items dyed with the RIT dyes on cold and with like colors because there could be a little bit of color bleeding still. But anyway, I'm going to need to put these through the dryer so that way we can have them be dry. And as for our yarn, I'm once again going to need to detangle this. As for the yarn, I am once again going to need to detangle this from the bag, but I don't really see any substantial color difference right now between the two skein, mini skeins of yarn, which is a good thing. Um, it is a good thing. I mean, it would be great if this color fixative worked and made like a big difference or something, but clearly I've washed all this three times and there is a substantial amount of color left in the fiber, which means that this color is very wash fast. Now I haven't tried washing on warm, but I almost don't want to because it recommends, the dye doesn't recommend washing on warm, it says to keep washing on cold. So, and I think that these shirts are pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and let everything dry and then we'll come back with some final conclusions. As we look at the finished dry shirts and yarn, I do not see any difference between the shirt and yarn that we treated with the Rip Color Stay dye fixative and the ones that we didn't. Both shirts have a really deep navy color and then a little bit of a pink hue in the pale section. And I don't think the pink is reading well on camera right now, but it is there. And in both of the cotton yarns that we dyed, we have a really, really deep, deep saturated navy. Now, we did observe with the initial rinses that we saw a lot more color bleeding when we did not use the fixative. So there was a difference in the hue, in the white of those two shirts originally. I washed them in the washing machine at the same time. So it's possible that these bled a little bit more and that led to this shirt taking up this little bit of a pink hue. So it is possible that the color fixative does prevent some bleeding. However, after three cycles in the washing machine, the color in the items themselves is equivalent. So I had heard reports from some followers that using these RIT liquid dyes on cotton, it washes out after some cycles. And I'm honestly not seeing any, any evidence of that. The RIT color fixative did prevent some bleeding. In the step when we were soaking these in the hot water, a lot more dye came out when we did not have the fixative than when we did have the fixative. However, in both of those cases, the excess dye rinsed out really, really quickly. Now, I'm not sure because I didn't wash them separately if there was more bleeding in the untreated shirt than the treated shirt. But I think the fact that the colors look really equivalent speaks volumes. If the color stay fixative were really necessary to help you maintain your color on cellulose fibers, you would imagine that after three washes through the washing machine with laundry detergent, that you would see a visibly paler color in the shirts that were not treated with the color fixative. Now, would we see a difference if we were, say, going to be washing on warm? I'm not sure. So there are different ways that we could take a look at this in the future. So is the color stay fixative necessary? Honestly, I don't know. 
it certainly didn't hurt anything, but it is another cost and another step. So I think ultimately it's up to you and I would love to hear if you've noticed it really causing a big benefit or not. Um, letting me know in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. As I mentioned, one of the benefits might have been preventing this sort of pink hue that we got from the white section of the shirt. Um, that happened, I th that's something that we observed from the bleeding of the first one, and when we first looked at the shirts, that color, that pink color was not in the second shirt. And so it's possible in the washing machine that the bleeding from the first um, in that wash sort of change the color on the second. Uh, so that is a possibility that it would help, I guess, the colors stay true um, in those first washes or something like that. But ultimately, uh, but ultimately again, you know, I, I don't know if it's necessarily worth you buying. In the yarns, maybe there is a hair of difference in the color between the yarn that was treated with the color fixative and the one that wasn't. But when you turn them around, honestly, I kept, lo I kept having to find the tie with the little bubble on it because I honestly could not tell which one was which. And so I think it, there might just be some tonal variation a little bit within these skeins and therefore it's a little hard to say if it made a difference there or not. Nevertheless, we learned that Rit Liquid Dye does a really awesome job for making a tie-dyed t-shirt. I think these shirts are awesome and I cannot wait to let my kids wear them. Laundry-wise, I think it is always worth uh, washing hand-dyed items separately and with like colors in case there is any bleeding. But I think that that's the case with, you know, really dark saturated colors anyway. No one wants one red sock to turn everything pink. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you found this experiment helpful, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. If you would like to support Chemnitz on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find a link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.